and I'm not trying to bash like academics here as well. I think there's a place for you know people doing research. I think that's really really important. But at the end, uh, you know, at the end of the day, vast majority of people are going to go into careers that you know where you do real work. So I'm in my final year of university this year, in my last semester. This is my fifth year of university, so I've had a range of experiences at uni. I've changed degrees, I went on exchange overseas, and finally I'm at the end. So I thought it was time to hand out some advice to those of you who are early on in your uni experience, or maybe you're in school and looking and going to start uni soon. In this video, we're going to talk about the importance of your grades, how to make you, how to make it so we are. We talk about understanding um, versus grades. We talk about networking, and we also talk about extracurricular activities. These are pretty much the entire. This is the, the whole thing, really, about your university experience. I hope you guys get something out of this video. Please click like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe so you don't miss another one. Peace. So one thing I wish I knew when I started uni was about getting good grades. Now, when I first started uni, probably for my first three years, I didn't really try that hard. I didn't really do, um, you know, go and put some extra effort in. I didn't really show my interest in my degree that much. I didn't really do as well as I would have liked. And this, this, this is a very common problem, right? Now. A lot of people, this is definitely my, what, I, what was going through my head was like, oh, this uni degree, it's not really going to be the same. Like when I go on work, it's going to be, I'm going to be doing something completely different. You know, it's it's not really related uh, in a sense. Um, you know, <laughs> and it's but it, but it's like yeah, it, it, that is true to some extent, right? You're not going to be studying and getting paid for it in the workforce. You're going to be applying what you've studied in some certain area. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your entire uni uni degree is worthless. Some of the value out of that, especially in your grades, comes into what career are you going to get outside of uh, once you finish uni. So what? This is fairly correlated, right, with your with your grades. You need to have like, it doesn't need to, you don't need to have exceptional grades to get a good job. You need to have like fairly reasonable grades though, and I think it's definitely worth putting in like a decent amount of effort into your grades, so that when you when it comes to applying for jobs, uh, that you can that you can get the sort of job that you want. While you may think in uni that. You know, this <laughs> my degree doesn't apply to real life, whatever. Like, you're not even going to get the opportunity to do what you want in real life if you don't put in some effort at university. So it's super important, and it's something that really, I, like I said, I didn't really try at all for the first three years of uni. I just sort of half-assed uni, and definitely in the last year, potentially last two years, I've really started trying a lot more, and I've been, you know, I've received better grades, and that really helped me um, to get into the career that I wanted. Another aspect of this is something that I call like the delayed success principle, right? An example for this is when I was in high school, uh, me and my friend were, you know, fairly similar grades-wise. Uh, we got fairly similar grades. We were both very good friends. Um, and in through um, year 12, which was our final year at school, um, he really went to the next level and did well. Um, whereas I just sort of kept on going uh, the way I was going. I ended up doing, um, you know, went into uni to engineering, something that, you know, was sort of expected, I guess, at that stage. Uh, my friend, um, he's gone on and now he's done medicine, right? And in, in Australia, or definitely at least in Adelaide, when you study medicine, it's a bit of a clout sort of symbol, right? Uh, everyone's like, oh, you're studying med, that's so cool, um, right? But you don't really get that um, recognition before you get into that, right? So before you get into medicine, it's not like, you know, you don't get recognized for that. You only get recognized for it afterwards. And in the same way, if you can think about this, like you're applying for a job, uh, maybe you do well at university and that's sort of correlated to your career prospects. You're not going to get recognition for that while you're studying hard or whatever. You're only going to get recognized for that once you get a good job. So it's important to think about this when you're when you're going through uni, right? Is that even though it's it kind of sucks <laughs> doing getting good grades at uni, it's not really related to what you're actually going to be doing. It's not until you end up getting the career that you want that you realize the benefit of doing that. So that's something to keep in mind for sure, that even though in the short term or while you're studying at uni, it's not really, <laughs> like I fully emphasise with emphasize with this, right? That university stuff is like, yeah, it's, it's all right, but it's, it's not really what I want to be doing. Uh, but you don't really get recognised for that hard work you put in at uni until afterwards. So that's something worth keeping in mind and, and 
making sure that you do try your best with your grades. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to add here is about, you know, thinking or sort of becoming so obsessed with your grades that you kind of miss, miss the bigger picture in a sense. Now, while it's good to, to get good grades and to try hard at uni, I think there's definitely a trap that people fall into where they become so obsessed with their grades that they sort of miss the entire point um, of uni, which is to sort of learn, right? It's to, to, to sort of develop your intuition in a way. And that's something that I think um, some people can get so obsessed with, with their grades. They can just think, oh, my grade, this is all that matters. Like, I'll do, like, you know, whatever the teacher says, like, I'm just going to do that. And, and they sort of miss the point. I feel like, I think when you, when you go to do an assignment or, or something, um, I think it's better to, to come at it with, from the frame of um, learning the overall um, picture and learning where stuff comes from, how stuff works, sort of the mechanics of the thing, rather than just the final product that gets shown to the marker. Um, so, you know, maybe you don't get, you know, fighting for a hundred percent on every assignment is good and it's something you should definitely try and do. But at the same time, if you lose a couple of marks, it's, it's not the end of the world. And I think it's much more important to understand the underlying structure of something versus the you know, just the finished product, that sort of thing that gets shown to the markers, right? Because at the end of the day, you're, you need to to learn and to develop your skills. And that's not really happening if you're just sort of sh showing the marker what they want to see versus <laughs> versus developing and having a sort of an intuition about how that works. Um, and I think generally, you know, these these sort of skills can, can definitely come across in the workplace. Now, one example here, I was reading a book called The Black Swan by Nicholas Nassim Taleb. And one example he gives here is to talk about um, a flipping a coin, right? So let's say uh, uh, someone is flipping a coin. Uh, they've flipped it 99 times, okay? And they've got heads on every single time. So they've, uh, heads is a 50% chance of getting a head. They've flipped 99 heads in a row. And now they come to you and they say, okay, James, is I'm going to, I'm going to like, throw the uh, the coin again do you think it's going to be a head or a tail now the, the sort of typical uni student I've just been talking about who's really obsessed with their grades might might say well James uh, <laughs> well you know it's uh, I've, the head's 50% chance of, of going ahead um, all the throws are independent which means the next throw you've got a 50% chance of throwing ahead um, <laughs> which you know in a pure like sort of academic form I guess that that's the correct answer but in, you know, in a more like a real life scenario, you've got to you've got to ask yourself. Um, it's more likely that the coin is biased. Okay, that 99 throws in a row of heads is just not like that's not a realistic thing, and it's much more likely that the coin's actually biased uh, than you know <laughs> than than you've rolled 99 heads. Um, and that's a way you can sort of frame this, right? Is that thinking things so by the book academic that you just say the answer, even though it's not. It's not, you're not really looking at the situation from a holistic view. I think that's something that can really get missed if you take your your grades, you know, as the be-all and end-all rather than the actual understanding behind them. Another thing here is, which again is from the Black Swan, is he talks about uh, martial arts. So someone who's really good at martial arts might be, you know, the world champion of karate or something. They're going and they're competing in the world championships. And then... Uh, if they go into a street fight, for example, they might actually be at a bit more of a disadvantage because they've learned to like, you know, you can't scratch. There's no, you can't kick them in, in the genital region. You know, there's certain moves in karate or whatever martial art you choose that aren't allowed. So when you actually get into a street fight, well, let's be honest, you're probably not going to be too bad if you've done martial arts. But like, <laughs> you know, there's certain scenarios where like, it's, it's, you know, you, you would be at a bit of a disadvantage, right? Because if someone goes to kick you in the nuts, <laughs> for example, during a street fight, then like, you know, it's like you, you might not be prepared for that. And that's that's something that's like you, you're left very vulnerable um, by having that expertise. And I think that can that can sort of be an, in parallel to university as well. Like if you say someone's studied really hard and is very academic in what they're doing, but then they're missing sort of key areas that are important for real life. 
for how stuff happens in the workplace. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to bash like academics here as well. I think there's a place for you know people doing research. I think that's really really important. But at the end, uh, you know, at the end of the day, vast majority of people are going to go into careers that you know where you do real work. And this is something to keep in mind that while you go through your uni degree, that the grades and and the sort of researchy style is is only good to a certain extent. And there's a, it's much more important that you have the intuition and the ability to use those things in a real life scenario and to just sort of keep your you know stay alert like think for yourself um, rather than just sort of regurgitating what the lecture says i think that that hits hits the point home quite well yeah so something i didn't really consider when i was in my early years of university was this thing called networking uh, this it's quite a broad term right but really all it means is making friends <laughs> and how, how am i going to make friends make the most amount of friends become a social social like king uh you know take over the the social uni social life um you know realistically that's probably not going to happen but you know how can we go about cultivating relationships at a uni and making friends with people um, that we can use later on, I guess. Um, you know, that, that people are going to be, a, you know, I guess that's a bad way to put it, but, you know, useful to us throughout our career. So one thing, sort of, I'm in my final year this year, right? So one thing that's really going on now is graduate jobs. Everyone's applying for jobs, like, can I get a job here? Wow, here, I'm, i got a job here. So there's people getting jobs now at, like, you know, really big companies. Companies that, you know, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be interested in working in, to be honest. So it's, it's worth, uh, you know, now that I have uh, knowledge of these people, right, it's, it's good to have that, have that around. So that, you know, if I want to transition to their, like, to a different career in the future, then I know people that work at these companies. Because that's something, I, again, I didn't even think about until this year, was that, you know, how am I going to transition my career in five years, in ten years? How does that, how does that actually take place, right? Because, you know, like, it's not like you, there's, not, there's another graduate recruitment for certain jobs. Like, you know, you're going to have to do things a little bit differently. And if you know someone that works at these companies, it's going to make that much, much easier. Because a lot of companies, and I think this is reflected in, st in the statistics too, about job postings versus the actual amount of job sort of movement that happens. And in reality, like, job, jobs that are posted online make up of quite a small proportion of the amount of jobs that are actually open or the amount of jobs that like are actually yeah that you, you can actually have and a lot of these are through referrals right so b because i know dave who works at you know kmart <laughs> you know and, and now i want to go and work there then i can just hit up dave and say hey mate like is anything is anything uh, at kmart <laughs> and then he'll say yeah man like you know we have a relationship so now it's going to make it much easier for me to get a job there so it's something we're thinking about when you're making friends and doing things at university. It's like, what sort of things are you interested in? And how can you uh, make friends with people who are going into fields that are either similar to yours or, or how can you have your interests, I guess, reflected in, in your friends? Because it's something worth thinking about, right? And I think going through your uni life and, and, and keeping that in mind, I guess, that you, know, you are eventually going to graduate and get a job. So it's worth you know, keeping that in the back of your head with the sort of people that you're going to be networking with. So I think extracurricular activities are some of the most important things that you can do while you're at university. In terms of like your employability, uh, the <laughs> things, you know, you're going to meet people, you're going to network, which is what we discussed earlier. These are all huge things that come in through extracurricular things. And I think, speaking from my personal experience, all the extracurriculars that I've done through my university time have all given me, you know, amazing connections and uh, experiences that really I wouldn't have had if I, obviously wouldn't have had if I didn't do them. But I think I would be such a, a different and like a way more boring person having not done them. You know, I was a part of the soccer team for a number of years, which was really, really good. And I met a lot of really cool guys through that. And one of the things I did, which I highly recommend that, if, if it's possible for you to do, then it's, it's it was incredible. But I went on exchange uh, last year. I went to Sheffield in the UK. And I think going on exchange for me was, was easily one of the best decisions I've ever made in terms of all the travel I got to do. And just the amount of self-discovery that went on during that period 
was something that has been sort of unrivaled really by any other experience that I've had. So I think that in itself is, is something that's definitely worth doing. But in terms of other extracurriculars, I think there's, they're so important, like I said, just about networking with other people. That's really one of the main things. Another thing to consider here is that extracurricular activity doesn't necessarily have to mean that you play a sport or you play an instrument or something. If you really wanted to, you could align your extracurricular activities to something that is also beneficial for your career. I mean, in reality, they're all going to be beneficial for your career, right? If you've got no extracurricular activities on your resume when you're applying for jobs, it's going to make your resume look extremely dull and you're going to look like a bit of a boring person, which isn't the sort of person that a lot of companies want to hire. But having extracurriculars, extracurriculars can be good for your resume too. For example, I'm a part of 180 Degrees Consulting at the moment, which is a consulting uh, club for non so we do consulting work for non-profits right and this is something that I've been able to network with like-minded people with and it's also allowed me to gain I guess in some ways like it's sort of practical experience to some extent so it looks amazing on my resume and next to that you know having leadership roles in clubs so you could be it could be 180 degrees the club that I've just mentioned or any other club really like <laughs> literally if you're in a leader, leadership position or on the board of a club like that is that, that it's, it's just very, very good. It looks very good on your resume. And also, once to get to that point, you've obviously got to have, uh, you know, you've got to know, like, most people in the club. Like, you've got to know all the board members. You've got to be fairly involved with the club to do that. So I think the amount of people you would learn, that uh, you would get to know through that experience is something that, that is definitely worthwhile. I think extracurriculars are, you know, probably underrated in terms of people don't really think about doing them. But I think these are these are fundamentally just as important as your uni degree in terms of how much you learn about life and and your people skills, which are you know which is super important nowadays. So thanks for making it to the end of this video. I hope you learned something about your uni life. I think and you've got a couple of things now that you can improve as you go through your uni career. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to press the like button and subscribe so you don't miss another one. Peace.